Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're going to learn how to play Cascadia. Cascadia is a game for one to four players that plays in about 45 minutes. It's designed by Randy Flynn and published by Flat Out Games. Let's take a look inside the box. There are habitat tiles, five starter habitat tiles, a cloth bag containing wildlife tokens, which depict five animals, scoring cards for each of the five animals, nature tokens, and a score pad. The point of the game is to win, and you win by having the most points. Points are earned by placing habitat tiles adjacent to the same type of habitat. By placing animal tokens in certain arrangements as shown on the scoring cards, and by having wildlife tokens at the end of the game. To set up, randomly give each player a starting habitat tile, which is laid face up in front of them. Randomly remove a set number of tiles as indicated in the rule book, returning them to the box. No peeking. Shuffle the remaining tiles and place them within reach of all players. Randomly select one of the scoring cards for each of the five types of animals. Place all wildlife tokens in the cloth bag and shake it well. I said well. Reveal four habitat tiles and four wildlife tokens creating pairs. Place the nature tokens within reach of all players. The player who most recently saw one of these five wildlife will go first. On to the gameplay. On your turn, you will draw one of the habitat tiles and one of the animal tokens and play them in front of you. Replace the tile and the token, and the player to your left goes. Play continues until all of the tiles have been used. More on that a little bit later. So how do you actually lay the tiles? Habitat tiles can be placed next to any existing tile. You don't have to match the habitats, though that will help you earn more points. And don't try placing a habitat tile out in space. That's just crazy. Tiles have to be touching. Each habitat tile will show one to three animals that can be placed on that tile. Only one animal token can be placed per tile. If you place an animal on a keystone habitat, one that only shows one habitat and one animal, and has this little pinecone symbol, you earn a wildlife token. Love these things. I'll explain why in a little bit. If the habitat tile shows more than one animal, any of those animal tokens could be placed there. So you could place a fox, an elk, or a bear on this space. And if you want to place the animal token on the habitat tile that you just took, do it. That's totally allowed. Every now and then you'll find yourself in the situation where you can't or don't want to place the animal token that you took. In that case, simply return it to the bag. No storing animal tokens for later. One thing I really don't like in games is when I get stuck with all of one type of resource and I don't have any options. Awesome news! In Cascadia, if all four animal tokens are the same, you instantly clear them and draw four new tokens. Anytime you place tokens, you pick one at a time and place them in order. You don't just get to pick where they go, you dirty little cheater. Now this could happen multiple times where you replace the tiles and then are forced to replace them again. After you've taken your tile and token, place all the cleared tokens back into the bag. So with four tokens, you must clear them even if you actually wanted that animal. But with three, you have the choice. You can choose to set aside the three matching animals and draw three more animals. You can only do this once per turn, so even if you cleared those three and placed new ones out and found three of the same again, you wouldn't be able to replace those again. They say rules are made to be broken. And I love breaking the rules in Cascadia. Legally, of course. What happens when you really just want an animal and it's not coming up? And you're not getting three of a kind so that you can replace them? You use a wildlife token. A wildlife token can be used to replace any of the animals you choose, replacing them with new animals from the bag. And what happens when you just really want a specific habitat and a specific animal, but they're not paired together? Again, you use a wildlife token to do that. So to restate, to gain a wildlife token, you have to place an animal on one of the keystone habitats. You can then use those wildlife tokens in one of two ways. One, to replace animals, just like if there was three or four of a kind. The other way to use your wildlife token is to take a non-paired habitat tile and animal token. So why exactly would you want to place habitat tiles in certain places or animals in certain areas? Let's go ahead and jump into the scoring to really learn why. For each of the five habitats, find your largest connected grouping of tiles and score one point for each connected tile. So if I had three forest in this region and four in this region, I would score four points. 
one point per tile in my largest group. Whoever has the largest grouping of each habitat earns additional points. In a two-player game, earn two points for the largest habitat. If tied, you each earn one. In a three to four player game, earn three points for the largest and one point for the second largest. If two players tie for largest, each gets two points and the second largest gets zero points. If three or four players tie for first place, each get one point and the second largest will not get any points. If any players tie for the second largest, none of them score any points. It's kind of confusing and I wouldn't worry too much about it, just get started into the game and refer back here or to the rule book to clarify at the end of the game. Onto the animal scoring. Each of the animals has four different cards. So there's four cards and five animals. We have 20 different ways that these animals could score. So I won't go into detail on all of them, but I'll just share a few examples. In this case, you score points for bears being in groups of two with no other adjacent bears. If you had three sets of this, you would score 19 points. Crushed it! For this elk card, you want elk in a straight line, and score an increasing number of points for an increased number of elk in a line. Last examples. Hawks want to be isolated from other animals. Score points for each hawk with no adjacent hawk. The cards detail the specific scoring method for each of the animals, and it's also outlined in the rule book with further clarifications. Okay, to finalize scoring, you'll also get one point per wildlife token that you still have. Add up your score, the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. If there's a tie, the tied players share the victory. All right, so the end of the game. The game ends once all tiles have been used and you are unable to restock the four tiles to choose from. Each player should have had the same number of turns. If not, you done messed up, AA Ron. And now you know how to play Cascadia. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There is a solo mode for this game. I didn't go into detail on it. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below and I can see if I could create a video about that sometime. Otherwise, until next time.